tell us about what you do, man. Man, uh, I'm an artist out here, you know what I'm saying, in, uh, in Arizona. And uh, just a rapper, man. It's more than just rap, though. I'm just like, it's like more of like an art form that I'm trying to, I'm trying to bring back to to um, Arizona. I feel like we kind of lost our touch a little bit, so. Yeah, and it's all about growth. It's all about growth. And I think that's, that's the biggest thing, to be honest with you. Like, with me, like, I've grown into, like, the person I am now. Um, on a on a like real life level and then also like artistically and, and musically so like I think that kind of like conveys in my music if you were to have listened to my earlier stuff so um, from that from that um, yeah I just think again I, th I just think it's about growth and stuff like that and who is uh who is the first person I was talking to my brother about a couple questions and this was a good one for me uh, who was a f like first person or if you remember like the first song that you listened to that was just like I could do that. Or I, that's I, what I, I want to do. Like, do you remember like an album or anything like that? Um, and here, here, here's where it goes back to me saying like I started when I was eight or nine. This yeah, bullshit. Uh, I would say probably the first, the first records that I was listening to was like some, some southern records. This is back when like Atlanta was like fucking popping. Yeah. So you had all like the Ludacris and shit like that. And the UGK, like, UGK, all that shit. Yeah, so that kind of got me exactly. That shit kind of got me into that. And um, like Ti, King of the South, that nigga. Yeah, man. that's that like that's back. That was like ten years ago, huh? Yeah, like oh five, like, like a little bit before <laughs> that. Damn. As far as like your album artwork, you just sent me your album art or your mixtape cover. Or which one is it's this gonna specifically? Be the, it's gonna be. Um, I labeled it as an EP. Yeah. One because it's like it's it's the it's window. Yeah, the it's, window. It's we gonna the put window. this shit on the back right yeah, here. Y'all yeah. gonna be able to uh, see it. It's called the window and. It's for me. It's it's more. It's more than just like an EP. Yeah. Because I've been working on it for so long, and I feel like it's just it, it embodies everything that I've developed into and grown into. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. um, it kind of shows like every stage of my life for the last few years, the last couple years. It shows everything I've been fucking going through. You know what I mean? And yeah. Album, so like more than an EP, it's more of an album. Um, the reason why I don't put the word album there is because I can't sell that shit. Yeah, <laughs> you gotta have like exactly the labeling and the yeah, publishing and stuff like that. Yeah, but EP or mixtape, whatever you want to call it, but it is it is a lot of people get it popping off a of, uh, EP and a mixtape. Yeah, uh, I'm a big fan of Pacific Division ever since back in the Got day. It. Like, yep, yeah. since like oh eight, they had a Fat Boys EP, and <laughs> I used to play that all the time. Yeah. Man. All the damn time, and then I started listening to them more, and they got their mania, their GMB, and it's just sometimes you need that unfiltered music so yeah. people can recognize what it actually is, like what greatness is. And the crazy thing about Pac Div specifically is like you you look at them, and they're not as big as you would think they should be, but like they're big enough to make enough to make a living on their own or whatever, and yeah. not have to like. Take the take that money that they're making and split it up and give it to like an A and R or to yeah. like a, a big big label. Because or you know like that. they got their own. Big you know Mims, likewise, those guys are steadily getting better. <laughs> B Young, he's always like it's just constant with him. Like he's always that middle man who's always gonna he's never gonna break the song down. Exactly. Uh Curtsy does like a lot of that. Like he I saw like how much it costs to have a lot of your favorite artists out for one night at yeah. like a club, hotel, something like that. Currency is a lot lower than a lot of people, but I think he likes it that way. Mm -hmm. So he stays on his level, because currency to me, he's just like that every guy. That, look, I can, you can do it too. Let me show you how to do it kind of guy. So as far as that part's going, I understand as far as where the EP yeah. can get you to that kind of fame, or that level of fame. Yeah. Um... So obviously you've been doing this for a while. Uh, what's been like the hardest part in like the last five years? Have you dropped it off? Have you picked it back up? Just um, I wouldn't say really dropped it off. Like when I when I make music and stuff like that, I'm always listening to music, or whatever. Like always thinking of new ways of not recreating myself, but like re uh, like I'm always I'm always keeping it fresh, and like keeping yeah. it fresh in my mind and stuff like that, and new ideas and stuff like that. But when I write, um. I'm getting better at it as far as like writing every day, but sometimes it's it's like too that that's where it comes to like too natural for me to like to force it. Yeah. So like, I never I never put it down, 
but I'm, I'm not always like writing because if you force it, it's not, it's not genuine. So like when I write, typically I'm, I'm gonna keep that shit. But like I have a lot of written shit that I, that I won't put out, but um, probably like notebooks and stuff. Just yeah, like mm-hmm. it's crazy. But um, but yeah, like it. I'm, I'm never like put put it down, dropped it off, but just like getting in the studio, recording and stuff like that. That that's probably the yeah. biggest big setbacks. Like finding studios. Like right now, I'm driving like an hour. An hour probably every other week, every week to get to the studio. And so it's like you got like that commitment, if something breaks down, that's an hour out. Yeah, so like if my car goes out, man, I'm... You know, I know what you mean, out. it's like you never put it down, but sometimes it's like you got work. You got other <coughs> stuff you gotta focus on, but it's still there. Yeah, there's always gonna be roadblocks, but you just gotta fight through that shit. If that's what you really wanna fucking do, it's uh, fucking... A big thing for me is stand-up, and I used to... I used to write a lot, just like they say, always keep like a book with you ever since phones came out. I always yeah. just type it up on the phone sometimes, just like some random jokes I think about, just stuff like that. Uh, but it came to a point where I was like, I'm just writing these because I think they're just like a quick, funny thought. I'm not actually putting any effort into this kind of thing. Yeah. So it's like the same with like raps. If I was ever freestyling with my friends, I'd just write something real quick. I wouldn't put any real effort into it. So... Um, writing every day, I could see it becoming like a chore and becoming like it dilutes it, so yeah. you don't know like where your best shit is, yeah. but, um, yeah, personally, I've never been there, I don't write every day, like I can't do that kind of thing, uh, so I gotta take like your word for it, kind of thing like that, but, I don't know, um, when did you, uh, do you got like a team with you or anything like that, you got a I'm couple not really, of homies? I'm not really with it team I was I could say like just recently yeah I, I guess I could say that but for the longest time it's just been me you know what I mean yeah so like um, that's that's another setback too not a setback but it's another obstacle kind of because like when you try to do everything on your own it gets like it gets overwhelming sometimes it really you know? does hard to stay focused on one thing so that, that's the thing like and I was talking to, to to the big homie about this shit because when you're like when you're an artist or when you're trying to do something on your own, yeah, and you it's like like me like music, I'm trying to rap. If I just want to focus on getting in the studio making songs, I can't really get too far if I'm just just doing that. You know what I mean? It's way it's it, it's kind of like it's kind of like if you're trying to like be a bodybuilder or something like that. Yeah, you know what they say like ninety percent of it's in the kitchen. Yeah, but all you want to do is lift weights. Yeah, you might eating too. I know, you know what, what you mean. mean. I know what you mean. It's that other. It's that other that. Making music, being in the studio, that's a big part of it, but it's low key like ten percent of it because you got this great music that you're making, but if you don't market it right or if you don't have the right team around you, like you said before, or if you don't if you're not doing other things around it correctly, that music is going unheard and you're not you're not touching anybody or spreading it. It's just music that will never get listened to. You know what I mean? So Yeah, that's a good way to put it. That's a good perspective of it because it's by that I was looking uh because I know my brother used to go to school with a, a homie that you used to know, Q. Uh, uh, I forget his real, like Quentin or maybe. God damn. What is it? Dominguez? Quentin Dominguez? Maybe. He, the, did he used to rap sure. too? Oh, nah. Uh, nah this dude was a kind of skinny dude. It was about five, six years ago. Oh, he had like a little afro. He was working on bass with us in the summer hire program. Afro? Oh, yeah, so like I knew, like. I knew that you guys knew each other from there. I just forget the full name because I know once Marquise. I get the name Marquise. That's my brother. Marquise bro. is your brother. That's my fucking brother. Bro. That's your brother. That's my nigga, man. Oh man. man. And it's funny. It's funny you even brought that nigga's name up. When I first started rapping or whatever, I was rapping and, and doing my thing. It was like shitty raps, of course. But we, I, I went to this. I went to the church since I was little. I was. I've been going to this church and uh, this dude who rapped. And he also had a studio. He kind of like took me in, but he also took this other dude in, Marquise. And since we were young, we were like always rapping. And I think that's where I where I like can. That's where I listen to music differently because of him. He was in a rap group or whatever back in Ohio a long time ago, or whatever. But he's like the OG. He like kind of. I am who I am now because of him. Like he, he kind of like shaped and molded me. He like put you on the be, game. He taught you how to listen a little differently, game, kind of thing. And that's the thing with niggas. They don't they don't like to listen to people. So when you listen and take in that information, it, be, it makes a huge difference. So um, me and Marquise were uh, were like um, homies. Like we've been like super close since like young. Yeah. And we were in this rap group called LGK. Um, 
it was a Christian rap group too. We were, we were cold, man. But uh, yeah, we kind of kind of broke apart over there. I got out of that and stuff like that. Life, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, it, it's crazy that you're the next day. That, yeah, that's my, boy. that's my G, man. He still rap? Ah, uh, he doesn't. But that nigga's nice. He's very still very one of those people. Nice. Like when he busts out the freestyle, you're like, damn. Now you freestyle, bro. Like he put me on game too on a lot of shit. So. Damn, it was if good. it wasn't for him or or the other big homie, I told you, but I wanna, I'd be a piece of sh shit, honestly. That'd, that'd be terrible. Uh, damn, yeah, my brother used to tell me about him how he raps and stuff. I was like, I know, I know this dude from somewhere. And then yeah. I remember I caught him with a picture of you. I was like, okay, that's how I know him. Kistador, Kielo, eh? Yes, and that link is what? Uh, well, you got like a, like if you could say like a couple words to like somebody in high school that just start picking up a pen and writing down, what would it be? Like, what would, what did they teach you that you would be able to like pass on to somebody else? Uh, just, just keep, keep at it, keep, keep, keep busting your ass and working towards it. Um, stay focused and remember where this shit comes from. It's not, it's not coming from Drake, it's not coming from Kendrick, it's coming from like OG. So like, listen to like other, other people, study them, study how they write. And then from there, if you can master that, my oh man, you can, you can master anything. Study, so, they study. I heard a little while ago, a long time ago actually. Everything's pretty long ago. Fuck, fucking up on my words. I listened to Drake and he said that he used to study Jay Z stuff. Like he actually used to like write it down, study it bar for bar. She yeah. like see how the brackets are broken down. That's the thing. Like people have to study who Drake and Kendrick study. They have to study who. Jay Z and Kanye and Common studied and they studied who they studied. Yeah, and when you go back, it's crazy. And like, and when you said Drake, Drake studied Jay Z. He also studied Fonte, mm -hmm. but nobody knows who Fonte is because little brother. Exactly, but nobody knows that because he's grown and like created his own lane. But or Elzai, I think I think it's Elzai. He used to study from Slum. Okay, so it's that's just like it's a, one of them. But like, if you look at them, East like, Coast, North Carolina area kind of stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. But like, that's that's real OG stuff. But that's really authentic. Mm -hmm. So if you study really authentic stuff, that's stuff that hasn't been diluted or watered down. Like you can't really study a Drake and want to be like Drake because it's his own style. But if you study something that's very authentic, you can create your own style. Yeah, you know what I mean. If you, that makes if, sense. You, if you learn the basics. You can do whatever you I want. I used to listen to a lot of Slim Villas. There's a lot of Fontaine, a little brother in there. Right. And it's just like, they got that chill music that you can listen to and you you kind of internalize it. You think more about your life. You start thinking about decisions, things going on. And I think people need that base because after they have that base, they can, and I guess they get enough popularity, they can just say whatever words sound nice because yeah. they'll get the cash going in. It'll go on the radio anyway. But and, and that all comes down to those same guys, those guys are intelligent because they don't have to say much. That's what, that's another part. If you think, look at it, they don't have to say much, but they're still popping because music is, again, 10% of it. So if you can market yourself right, if you learn the tools of the trade, like if you learn how to say what you want to say, you can say whatever you want. We're going to start wrapping this up, but you got any last words? Want to show love to anybody out there? Uh, one time for my people uh, over at uh, Ninth Unknown. Uh, I see you guys, the people out there at Boneyard, yo, I tried to fucking, I don't know where the fucking hat is, I was drunk last night, I probably lost it. Uh, <laughs> my man, so my man Carl Weathers was popping, um, everybody like uh, holding me down, like supporting me, I very, very much appreciate it. Um, and yeah, I got this new video out for uh, Abilene coming out this end of this week. Uh, what's the date today? It's, uh, it's got to be like the 10th, 11th, I think it's 11th. 10th and 11th, so it's the 10th or 11th, so if you're seeing this, it's in a couple days probably. Uh, it's going to be released. It's called uh, Abilene. Uh, I got this, um, the, the project, the window coming out uh, about two or three weeks after the video, so be on the lookout for that, man. Just follow me on all uh, social media. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. What's, uh, what's your Twitter and all that? What's Twitter, your SoundCloud? Twitter is Real Damon Logan. SoundCloud is Real Damon Logan. Uh, I, Instagram is Damon Logan, and uh, yeah, that's it. That's it, and that's all. That's much love to all you all out there. Nobody out here doing what he does or what I do could have done this without support because I've had all this stuff for a good two months, and if it wasn't for the people constantly trying to push me, I almost gave up because of X, Y, Z reasons, but support goes a long way, so 
just show love, click some links, and uh, we out. We'll be here next time. Peace. Yeah. Alright, that's, that's it, man. That's it. My man. I'll start it.